Lisa. It's so good to have you back. It really is. It's so I'm good to be I'm very happy there. to have you back. And she brought these glasses, and we're going to celebrate and make a toast to your return to Channel 36, WeHo, West Hollywood. It's a pleasure having you, dear, okay? Pleasure being here we'll with you. We'll take one quick sip and talk. <laughs> mm. Good champagne. <laughs> good. <laughs> okay. And the glasses are gorgeous. Thank you so much. They're just beautiful. I'm glad you Anyhow, like Anyhow, Elisa's back with us, and it's uh, been a long time. It's been, I think, about four years. And, four or five. Uh, yeah, and I wanted her back because she's done a lot of things. Okay. First of all, in February and March, she was at the Matcha Theater on Melrose in West Hollywood, a one-woman show. And no, two-act play. Oh, two-act play. And then she had her book, Tits and Tombstones. Well, the play was Tits and Tombstones, and the book was Too Old to be a Hooker, Too Young to be a Madam. Ready, camera, two, take two. And I won the book of the most erotic book of the year a couple of years ago with the book publicist, book publicist, of Southern that's, California. That's a higher one. That's I gave you a plug. <laughs> and also, the Beverly Hills Courier voted that as the most exotic book. So that was a thrill, a big thrill. I mean, you should really feel fabulous on that. Well, Lorraine's a cheerleader, you know. <laughs> she believes in me, and that's nice. Oh, she is. She's a usually people that are more successful than I am believe in me. The ones that aren't don't like me. <laughs> but her titles are great, and everything she does is so unique and different. And like I said, she's a personality within herself. Okay. Uh, to That's Brett Steinle. Okay. He's a very well-known actor. Uh-huh. Travels all over the world, does okay. his acting thing. Okay. And there it is. My hunt. Too old to be a hooker, too young to be a madam. And I said to her, oh, goodness, to get a movie on that, oh, it would be so, so wonderful. Erotic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of erotic. Wild. <laughs> Better than Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> I I kind of think so. You think I, so? I saw the. I happened to. Did see you see that? What I did see it. Unfortunately, I hate to admit it, but the sequel just came out the other night. You know, when I was uh, just, you know, and it was so boring. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. At I least. mean, one thing I might be all things to all people or no people, but I do not want to get tied up. <laughs> that is not my thing. Yeah, but did you swing from a chandelier or something like that? <laughs> oh, yeah, listen to her. But she, she did swing she from a chandelier. So that's kind of wild. The guy swung from the chandelier. Oh, I thought you swung from it. No, he did. Oh, he did. Yeah. Did he fall down? In a maid's contract. <laughs> A maid's costume. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the show at the Matcha Theater on Melrose that happened, okay? Okay. So tell us a little bit about that, okay? They would want well, to hear that. Two, two, two we need another toast. Okay, for that. another toast. Elisa, to you and your great work. To you and Lorraine. To okay. you, Lorraine. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, I believe in visualization. And Lorraine went to see this woman, Odalie Sninan, who owned the Matcha Theater. And I was supposed to be there, and then the next thing happened that they weren't there. And then the show went from the Coast Theater to the Matrix Theater. And when I was a playwright, society columnist, me, even went to finishing school, I know that people can't believe it, in Pebble Beach. Me, finishing school, can you believe? I knew how to pass the cream anyway. That, that was about what I learned. And um, suddenly this woman and I, I had this vision of her 
and it took four years and finally we met and she wanted to do you know produce my two act play of Jane Harlow Tits and Tombstones at and I sent the Matrix Theater a message, and then she is, yes, you are, Elise. You are very pushy, and you get what you want. So she went after the guy, and she got the keys to the theater, and we had the biggest blowout in the whole world. There were not, it's a 99-seat theater on Melrose, class act, and we had 99 people come. I have a lot of my friends come and a lot of people I didn't know, and then we had a champagne fromage party after. So it was a big deal. It was February 26, uh -huh. 2018. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So it was, you know, wonderful. The actress was fabulous, and it was really, really exciting for me. Well, how do you feel? That was a passion, okay? So you completed that passion, okay? So. How do you feel about your next passion? Your next passion now? Come up and see me sometime, honey. <laughs> it's going to be May West. May West? Yes. Very because interesting. What I did was I did psychic readings at the Peterson Automatic Museum for Genre Hotel. And they had about a thousand people, and I did that twice, and I was right on. And uh, I dressed up with a blonde wig, and I acted like Mae West. Oh, you'd be perfect. Perfect, perfect. So, so suddenly, Dinner at Eight is my favorite film with Jane Harlow. And uh, Mae West came on before. And I think that Jane Harlow really emulated Mae West. I think, we're, think that's so? where she got Why it. Why were you so into Harlow herself as as a woman. What attracted you for you to okay. just dive in there? I lived, think about her. I'm supposed to look at the camera, right? <laughs> you can look at me and you can look at the camera. <laughs> okay. Well, I lived on Easton Drive in Benedict Canyon and across the street was the house that Paul Burns supposedly got murdered or killed himself. We never knew. So my Question first husband there. was Jimmy. He took to wearing lipstick and sitting around in his blue robe all the time. So he was kind of a downer. But we snuck into the house next door where Jean Harlow and Paul Byrne lived. Uh -huh. And it had a winding stairwell and a balcony. And I would pick up a glass of champagne and go kind of imitate Jean Harlow. You love that, huh? Watching her exactly. films. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure, honey. You know, kind of like that. I loved imitating her. She and my tits were insured by Lloyds of London. So eat your hearts out, all you ne necrophiliacs, if you ain't a bunch of dumb bunnies. She had this flair. What a flair she had. I thought but she, she Can would... I ask you something, excuse me? She had her tits or bosoms insured. They were hers. But they were hers. But they weren't that big, were they? they she were. Was, wasn't she tiny built or not? Uh, she was very kind of, yeah, tiny. Kind of tiny and everything. And I think right. she was the most beautiful. Gorgeous and face, yeah. At dinner at eight, she was just, she had this maid, and she'd say, get that for me right now, you moron. And her husband and she used to get in fights, and, and he was a gangsta. And she, he'd say, I'm going to dump you off where I left you, you little you-know-what. <laughs> and she said, I'll blow the whistle on you if you think you're going to mess with me. And it was just crazy. I she just had that strange voice, right? She had that there voice where she goes, up and down, yeah, up and, up down. and down. And then Mae West, she got it from Mae West. Because before I watched Dinner at Eight, Mae West was on there. Okay, Dinner at Eight, wasn't Myrna Loy in that movie too? She, um, With them? Dinner at Eight? Dinner at Eight. I was so concentrated on Harlow that I don't even remember that. But anyhow, all those actresses, they were so wonderful, so different. It was such so a good unique. era. Yeah, it was a great era. It was an exciting era. 
We've got a very boring era right now, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. I'm jaded, but not faded. I'll tell you what. Well, the glamour. Number one, the glamour, I think, has gone so much. I mean, 20, 30 years ago in Hollywood, I mean, I wasn't here. I think I've been here about 24 years. But prior to that, it must have been sensational. Oh, just, I know. So, just wonderful. The bootleg gin and <laughs> everything was flowing and running the all over the place. I even had in my play, two act play, I had a Latin gardener that came to trim her bush. And it was so funny how she goes, you know, she had an affair with him obviously the night before. And then he comes back and he wants more and she says, Get out of here, you pizza. You know, you pizza. Never mind. I don't, I don't like to talk dirty on the camera. Me? But, no, you know, never. it's a shame, though. She was so young when she was she found. She was 26. Yeah, that's what I mean. All these starlets, uh, sexy, talented, Marilyn Monroe, question mark, answer, uh, Hedy Lamar in a fire, um, uh, with Rita Hayworth, Alzheimer's. Tragic. Tragic, all of these actresses. I know. I and love some of them Hayworth. Oh, I know. And some of them so young. Carol Lombard. Carol Lombard. And the she plane. She was married right? to Clark Gable. Yeah. Didn't she die in she a plane? She died in a plane crash. Pitiful. Terrible, so terrible. So I think this, the era was absolutely fabulous. But I loved the 60s, 70s, and 80s rock and roll. How would you change things today, more or less? Uh, I don't. I don't want to get a threatening letter from. <laughs> I can't mention the name. I know. Let's let's not do that. Let's be I alone. won't mention the name. Careful, cautious. Careful, careful. That's right. I think this era sucks. <laughs> okay. I think it's boring. I don't like the music. And some of the people are okay, but. Mm, they don't do it for me. I know. It just, well, uh, it's not. Well, you compare. Uh, this is the trouble. When you saw it a different way and the thrill was there, and then you compare it to the way things are now, you can't help it but compare. It's completely different. It's like a downer. It really is. It really is. It really Especially is. Especially your life with your husbands and the movies and the people you came in contact with, but it's not done because you're still up here doing things. Is which that is, me? That, that's you. Hi, Brett. That's you. That's it. Is that really me, huh? Wow. So, on the book. Well. Too young to be a man, too old to be a hooker. Would, do you want a movie of that? Of course. You mean no one ever approached you? They really did, and when I looked at my old emails, I got CAA and I got all kinds of big people that wanted it uh -huh. to know who had the rights, and when they found out that it wasn't about hookers and pimps, they didn't want it. Yes, but you have in there. I mean, Well, it's, I have it's, it in there, but that wasn't the main story. It wasn't the main. I mean, it's risque. It's wild. Yeah, that's why I won the award of the most erotic book. Yeah. From the book publishers of Southern California, and that's a very big organization. But I and think that was at the Sportsman's Lodge with the watery salmon. <laughs> 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 I, tell you. I just think you haven't met the right person yet. You have to get the right person to grab something like this. I met you. me. <laughs> 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 well, we'll we'll see what you know. We'll see what we could do. You sure plug. Howard Stern. Oh, oh, Howard Stern. You should be on Howard crazy. Stern's show. Huh? You should be on Howard Stern's show. You I know, you plugged you. That's right. Yeah. Said, is it yeah. uh, or isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I want to know now. Yeah, he'd love to have you on the show, I'm quite sure, definitely. He and I? Yeah, together, look out. Or Bill Maher and I. Yeah. Of course, I'm not political, you know what yeah, I mean? Well, but we won't get into politics right now, especially no, we will now. Not What's occurring in the world? I don't want to be locked in a cage. I know. Okay? We, we won't get into that, definitely. No. Okay. So, uh, what are you planning now? What is in your heart? What do you really want? 
I want theater more than anything. Right. That's okay. my heart. Okay. That really is. As far as the book world, that doesn't really turn me on. Okay. I feel like I've done it, and I thought of something really hysterical that I should throw it out there. I thought of... What if they had a cannabis, cannabis, excuse me, rehab on Point Dune, and they only Point Doom, pardon me, and all they did was give them cannabis. But if they drank or took pills, they'd throw them out of there. <laughs> way out, way out. That's funny. For breakfast, they have oatmeal cannabis. And I could go on from there. Well, you know what they're doing with the now cannabis. It's all in everything now, you know. Candy, all types of food. Right. Yeah. And it's open. Everything it's is good. cannabis. Everything is cannabis. But they just can't drink. And they can't take pills. They can't take Xanax. But they can, they have a little, a little joint rolled up with dinner. Near the napkin. Yeah, but don't have it with two, two, what is it, THC in it. If there's no THC, I mean, you could drive, you could do that because there's no uh, effect. Right. Physically on you. I wouldn't it. try it. <laughs> no, but it's okay, it's okay. Just remember, I think it's THC. If THC, I, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, THC, we have to be no, careful. No, this is of. just cannabis. Yeah. Oh, the Can strong. Cannabis. The real McCoy. Real. Yeah, the real McCoy. I don't like it anyhow. But anyhow, you had that play. It was one night only, right? Yes. Wouldn't you like to have it again? Of course and I have would. And have it like for a week or two weeks or something like oh, that? Oh, I'd like to have it for a few months every weekend. And now what's good is everything was equity waiver. And now the theaters, a lot of them are going to everything was equity. Uh -huh. And now they're going a lot into equity waiver which meant that the actors, I've got 10 actors, they each have to get paid $20 for each performance. So that can add up, you know? But I do want to get in there, and then somebody approached me to go to some theater in the Valley. But, no, Holly, you know, Harlow is not Valley. No, you're right. Harlow, Harlow is West Hollywood or Hollywood. Right in our area. It That's has to be sure. in a big theater. It does. And there's a new theater, the one that used to be in the Macho. Oh, near Yugo's. Nine, I forget Nine the name. Nine Eleven or something like that. It's near Yugo's in West something Hollywood. Something like that. And I talked to the uh, artistic director for a while, and she needs to have a little visit. Too bad Lorraine's too busy because she can close deals. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll see what we could do. Definitely really? see. Really? Yeah. Well, let's talk about Mae West. I want to see you on stage. You have to perform. You really do, Not Lisa. Me. Oh, really? You're magnetic. Well, I should have showed you the picture of me at the Peterson Museum where I dressed up as Mae West with the wig, and I talked like that. I mean, your performance. Okay, honey. <laughs> Why? Why wouldn't you do it? You're certainly not afraid to do it because you love to perform. Nah, nah. I like everybody else to perform and I like to watch. I'm a voyeur. <laughs> Let them do the performing. And they West, her life. Uh, I'm going to really research it because I think she's something else. Yeah. When I saw her, I heard that Dinner at Eight with Jane Harlow was going to be on a certain, you know, TMC. Right. And just before Mae West came on, uh huh. and I heard her about the come up and see me sometime, honey, and all that, and I thought, aha. Uh -huh. She had a, a different, unique voice, too. But Harlow... Har got a lot from Mae West, yeah. I can promise a you. A lot there. Yeah, copied a little she bit. She outshined her, you know. Yeah, but Mae West, I think, was more forceful, and she was the larger type statue yeah. of a woman, And too. she wasn't as beautiful, you I know. know what I mean? That's true. That's but true. Harlow got a lot of, you know, her voice from 
May was. Yeah, I've got her a long way, definitely. So anyway, so I had a really good director, Odalise Nanan. Hello, Odalise. No, I won't go to the valley, dear. She's uh, sorry, I won't mention the name of the theater either. You find me a spot in West Hollywood in WeHo, or Hollywood, and then we'll talk again. Now, she's a very talented woman, too, in her own way, too. She knows what she wants, also. Well, she, like she says, she's relentless. When she wants something, she goes after out. it, and she does not quit. When, I want to ask you, I never asked you this before, when did you start writing? When did you start creating? Because I know you were in the movies, you did that, but the other end. When One day I was sitting on a movie set, like I used to, because I used to do stunts, yes, and I used to do nude scenes for actresses that didn't want to do them. So I was sitting there bored, waiting for the next take, and then I got on the take, and one actor said, okay guys, to the crew, be cool, be cool, stop staring. And then he went, uh-oh, oops, oopsie, I just got a heart on. I thought, oh no, oh no. But anyway, I sat on the movie set waiting to be called, uh -huh. and suddenly I started writing about all the bizarre things that were that happening. That were surrounding you. Yeah. Because you were right in and the middle of it. And that's how it all started. That's it. Okay. And that's how Too Old to Be a Hooker, Too Young to, to Be a Man started. Right, right. Because how I got the title. I remember that man mentioned that to you or something like that. I called up casting. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. It's Elisa. I hear you have a hooker call at Universal. And I was always taught cast as hookers because I was smart. They were the ones that made the money. And oh, I really? Yeah, because on the sets, all the hookers made a lot of money. You know what I mean? They but were how the about best. the stunt people? They Didn't were the they best make job. A lot of money too? Then I did stunts. I got buried alive in a movie <laughs> by 10,000 pounds of silicone snow. They said, don't breathe in the life tube. I was doing the stunt man, yeah, and he bribed me, <laughs> and he said, okay, if you do this for me, then I'll get you on this James Wood movie, and I said, okay, I'll do it, and I walked into the set, and I said, oh, what are the stunt, God, they had stretchers, people That's in stretchers, so I said, what are they in stretchers, oh, it's no big deal, so anyway, I got on the set, and they had 10,000 pounds of silicone snow. And they said, here are your life tubes, and if you just suck on this life tube and jump, all the snow will fall on you, we'll, you know, and we'll let you know when to jump. And suddenly, I was afraid to put the life tube in because I thought it would come out the wrong way. <laughs> so there I was, buried alive by 10,000, and they go, don't breathe, God, don't breathe in, I'm getting nervous thinking about it. Don't breathe in the chemicals, and I had to, and then they That's said body scary. count, body count, and finally they heard my name, and two grips dragged me out, it was in a church, and they threw a church bench on my leg and broke my leg, so I took a little hiatus. Terrible. And I went back. Terrible, terrible, terrible. What an experience that was. What an experience. Buried alive. That was scary. Worse, Real worse. scary. Oh my God. Definitely. That was about, a, I think the Mexican jail was even scarier. <laughs> yeah, I remember when we said that before. Yeah, she ended up in a Mexican jail. Oh my God. Too much. In a bikini. I wanted you back because I wanted to tell the people the things that you did that weren't discussed last time, and you're still going at it. You're not stopping. You're following the road, that direct road, that passion, which I admire. The I'm, yellow brick road. The, the yellow brick road, definitely. And uh, you don't let anything stop you, which is good. But you're, you're beautiful. 
you're beautiful. You have the energy, you have the talent, and you have what it takes. You got something out there that's magnificent, and it'll continue. I want to toast to you. You're a great lady, and so it's good you. seeing you again. We have to keep this friendship going and keep the people uh, notified of what Elise Eden is doing now. And you never know, it'll be a big question mark. Mystery. I want my two-act play, Tits and Tombstones with Jane Harlow, and to find another Harlow because this girl is doing Marilyn Monroe and she's really busy. Uh-huh. And that's what I want more than anything in the world right now. I love you. It was great having you back. You look wonderful. Folks, it was so good having Elisa back on the I show. I love you, too. And uh, it's been fun. This is the main thing. It's like in my own home and uh, talking and getting people's feelings and uh, let them express themselves. This is what it's all about. Cheers again. That's a wrap. Cheers.